Hi, my name is Howard Jones and I run online art tutorials in various mediums, uh, but primarily a watercolorist. But in this particular workshop, um, it's an acrylic workshop and the my aim here was to um, offer perhaps um, some inspiration into um, painting in a, a more direct style and I refer to this as a sort of pushing colors. Um, we're told mostly to mix colors um, and learn to mix colors which is absolutely right we should learn the um, basics of color theory and learn how to mix our own colors um, and, and that's a huge benefit in itself there's dangers with that of course in the early stages in particular because we tend to perhaps over mix and often end up with quite muddy paintings and this demonstration was really um, aimed at that very issue to try and counteract that um, when it happens by going back and um, thinking of colour as a, as a pure um, a pure saturated uh, version and I refer to it I think it, it's ten, we tend to refer to it as pushing your colours by where you're keeping your colour, colours as close as possible to those um, in the tube so you don't you know they, they, they come out of the tube and you try to keep them in, within your painting very close to that original colour um, and um, find it very beneficial it's it's quite um, it's quite refreshing in a sense um, and offers up this as you can see on the screen now offers up this sort of um, semi-abstract impressionistic um, style um, I do have the full pack and the full uh, information um, pack that is sorry uh, on my uh, website available to download um, and if you like what you're about to see in this demonstration then please remember to subscribe and uh, hit the like button if you want um, also to receive uh, immediate notifications of everything I upload uh, as they're uploaded please remember to just click on that little bell icon I uh, hope you enjoy the following and hope to see you uh, or have your company rather again so I've drawn out my um my painting the elements of the painting and I'm just going to show you it better by uh, putting some paint line over it to show off the uh, actual drawing so you can see what it is I've done here so let me just grab uh, a scruffy brush and I'm picking up some um, Payne's gray here and I'll start with our focal point territory. And just on the note for a moment of design. I look for the design in my paintings. That's where the um, windows are. I've got to be a little careful. I've got to remind myself here because if I, go, if I wanted those windows to be a, a, a really sort of bright greenish or uh, sorry a bright red or blue color I, I've got to be cut back on this drawing a bit um, but this is really to show you the layout here there's a little bit of dark land back there if you take a minute folks or a second with me here if you've got your reference photo in front of you talking about a design uh, an eye for design okay rather than uh, representational subject of realism um, I spotted this little pale green field about here it's tiny in the photo but I'm going to use that to get um, gain some impact there and it's I'm going to make it slightly bigger than it is in the um, so I'm thinking design first um, that area there that I'm pointing to is going to be a probably a bright yellow, yellowy green, something like that one we saw on my on my palette. Uh, uh, sorry, on that piece of paper example. Um, because without that, it, it, if we if we are going to push our colours, you know, into saturated areas, um, 
it would be nice at least for me to demonstrate to you folks that if you if you dull down some of the saturated colors either side and leave one saturated color in the middle where my finger is that that's going to work that that's going to make for a, an interesting design aesthetically pleasing looking design so would i use this as heavier uh drawing with paint like this if i was really going for uh, a pushed color painting i probably wouldn't so, as i mentioned earlier um you don't really want to sully colors if that's what you're going for by putting uh, too much black paint on here okay the other thing i want you to to, to point at out to you too is if you look at the end of the building i don't see the building as a major player in this painting if i'm honest about it it's really about the 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 elegant um willow tree okay so that's where i will concentrate my focal point that that to me is is is, is the area that i want to show off but the building therefore can't be um it, 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 it we're gonna have to play it down somehow okay well what i was going to point out sorry was this in the photo, you can see a hard edge at the, where, the, uh, where, where the roof of the building finishes, okay? I don't want that. To me, that does not, it says it's no friend of the willow tree, okay? Um, it, whereas, it, it, so, it, so it makes this building stand alone. I don't, that would make the building stand out. By just, put, by just losing that edge at the end of the building, we stop that building from standing out, okay? We join it to the lovely willow tree with no gap, so we can't see the edge of the building. And that way, as I say, it, it, it stops becoming about the house, the, sorry, the building, whatever it is, and, and remains being um, all about the willow tree. So, Edges. That, that's why did it stand out? Why did the um, building stand out before I did that? Because it had a hard edge in uh, where I didn't want it to have a hard edge. Okay, so, these will be softened anyway out, out around here outside. Um, but it's it is all about this, or it will be. Sorry, all about this lovely willow tree down here. Um, let me just explain also what I will leave put in uh, and leave out. Um, you may, those keen eyed of you may have noticed a couple of um, ducks uh, down here. It really isn't a painting for that today, folks. Um, it's not about uh, uh, the ducks on this little river. Um, we could, it, it can, it could be on another, uh, another day and I'd thoroughly enjoy doing it that way, but that's not what it's about today. It's about learning about the other stuff. So, um, so have you noticed also that my wall, this, this was a bridge. I took this photo um, from uh, trying to dodge traffic because it was, there were cars coming behind me. Um, so I sort of ran out and took this photo and I didn't like the way in the photo that I caught it very briefly by where the wall in the photo comes across like this, doesn't it? That's not, for me, that's, it's not great. So I, I've, decided in retrospect if i'd have stayed probably where i was i would have been safer um physically safer and got a better photo from it so i'm just pulling the that wall this way so this would be the top of the wall here made it made it a bit of a vertical on the edge of the painting it's going to be far better for the design okay if you just if we just stuck with this diagonal line at the edge we'd have taken our viewers out either out down down through the bottom or out through the side diagonals are very powerful okay so if the diagonal is in the wrong place stop it being a diagonal you know um diagonal through the bottom part of the willow tree here would be great because it's in the focal point territory there's another diagonal there look look at the top of that willow tree up here there's a diagonal there and it's parallel to the diagonal that's down here on the bottom right things like that a design it's a design eye that you need to pick up on you and I, I strongly suggest you start looking for things in your potential um, reference material next time you're considering painting something L look for these um, these things but always start with oops always start in the focal point and say you know what's going on here oh look you know look at that just noticed there's there's a good diagonal there's a slight slight diagonal somewhere in the middle too actually anyway 
So let's start pushing some color onto this painting. So I'm going to go garishly bright, only to knock it down later when we get back to it after a break to where I think, you know, the painting perhaps should be. So um, the good thing is here, this is, this is an opposite uh, uh, exercise, if you like, if you want to see this demonstration as an exercise, um, in what we normally have to uh, contend with, and that's making our colors mix and not over mixing them so they go dirty and muddy. Um, this is the opposite. So I'm putting out a bit of the cadmium yellow on my palette, I'll show you here. And I shall use, um, ultramarine blue and we'll build this up take my one inch flat brush and i'll mix these two see you see even this you could say well i i'm just going to make it a yellow tree for the moment okay will i use white uh yeah if um, this probably isn't the demonstration or lesson to be saying this, but uh, when you're working in acrylics, you have to be very careful with white. I did notice, and I meant to mention it at one of the crits, actually. Um, I think it was the paint in the workshop last month where we were doing the ruined buildings. Um, there was somebody's painting had a lot of white in it and it gives a very chalky pasty look to uh, the painting. Um, so just be really careful with white paint with acrylics, okay? Only use it if you really think it's needed and you will see me use it a little bit because it gives these shapes a body. This is quite transparent at the moment, um, but I'll continue. I'll, I'll put this yellow in, so this is just pure I'll have to keep using that term, pushed color. Okay, saturated color, straight out of the tube. And let's, I could probably go in most places with this. It's a very direct, what I do like about working this way, it's a very direct way of painting. It's, a, it's, um, it, it, it's quite liberating in that sense. You don't have to worry about is it, is it, you know, am I mixing it correctly? Am I making awful colors? Uh, I probably won't put any in the back area. I could put a tiny bit through there, I suppose. But remember, now then, here's an interesting thing. I just mentioned I won't be using much white in these colors. But if I really want to pop something out so it looks different to everything else, I would probably use this yellow that I'm using now, but with some white in it because that will give that area a bit of body. Um, I'm cleaning the brush. And this time, oops, let me just grab a cloth a second. Anything with acrylic paints, you, unless you're using two or three or sometimes even four brushes, you need to be re cleaning the brush between changes of color, particularly with this style. Um, I'm just gonna put a bit of the ultramarine blue now in where can we put this? We'll put it into the dark. So I'm thinking of a, a tonal change by using a color that's tonally different and darker to the yellow, okay? That blue might live around the waterline here. So I think that area back there, as I said earlier, that will be this will be a sandwiched area of light between this will be darker eventually. And this is certainly dark back here. So I didn't get, I don't really need to use much of that blue. Clean the brush off. And this time I'm gonna go in with uh, a red in the building. And, that, and that knowingly, I, I, I'm gonna put red in this building, but I, you know, I know that another move in this sort of game of chess that it is, um, that red will, will be probably my first port of call when it comes to getting rid of the color. Um, but we have to sort of make it a different color. 
I could make it blue, I suppose, or just a different kind of blue. I could use that. That's the thing. As, as this is an introduction, you, you take you would take this sort of one step further. I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a taste of that as we go through. You uh, you could um, you could use three blues. I have got three blues on our list of materials. So you know, I will be showing you how to uh, change the tonal value of a given area, uh, the red area, for instance. Now here's my cadmium red. Okay. I do, I do make sure that the brush stroke is directional. In other words, if there's a slope in that roof, my brush stroke uh, 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 follows that um, diagonal through here. See how red is such an eye catch, isn't it? You know, so you immediately start thinking, well, how are you going to, that, that doesn't pop now as much as it did when I first applied it, the yellow willow tree, because of this next to it. So these are good things, valuable things to be, to be learning. But make these little notes, make these little mental notes while you're working, you know, rather than stop and write it down uh, on a piece of paper. Um, and you can do that, sorry, I'm not saying don't do that, but um, if you really think it's important, you think, I might, I might forget that after this process, after this exercise, and just jot down something very, very quickly, or even record yourselves. I used to do that too, just run a little, uh, have a little uh, dictaphone, um, little digital recorder. And while I was painting, if there was anything I felt was poignant and very, very relevant for my learning, I used to just voice it into a little um, handheld uh, recorder. So um, uh, choices all the time, all the time. Should I echo this red over here on this bank? I'm, I'm sort of, you know, I, I, I will sometimes refer to the photo for some ideas. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm thinking to myself, might it be a nice idea to uh, echo this color somewhere over here? So I've gone in with a, a, a weaker, version of that in, in here. Now I'm going to turn my attention to the sky. Um, and for that, I'm going to use cerulean blue. Let's just get it out of the tube. If, if I wasn't painting in this fashion, in this very deliberate uh, pushed color fashion, I, I would be thinking of using two blues at this stage. I'd probably start at the top with an uh, ultramarine blue and then introduce um, this cerulean blue at the bottom. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, oops, that's a bit too much water in this brush. Bear with me a second. Thought I was painting in watercolor for a minute. Um, yeah, I would uh, start at the top with ultramarine blue and then uh, as I move down, move into a cerulean blue and then something warm like this, like this um, burnt sienna that's already on the canvas. Oh, that's what I meant to say. I meant to apologize too. I, I noticed I'd put um, 12, what was it? Uh, get 12 by something or other size board on and then realize that my boards I'm using at the moment, I bought about 18 months ago. I bought a huge amount and I'm still using them. I went back to reorder them. I don't think they do this size anymore. It doesn't matter if you're using something similar close to even a big, you know, a heavy chunk of paper. Um, it's 200 pound watercolor paper is OK. Yeah, so I said, the, what have they done with the. Um, what have they done with that size? They obviously don't do it anymore. Or my supplier stopped doing that size. So I'm cutting into this tree over here because I don't want it, it was, when I, just as I looked, it was as tall as this willow tree. We don't want that. We need that tree over here to be less interesting, uh, less high, and therefore less interesting. Now, I don't mind leaving sort of traces of the burnt sienna in the sky back there. Um, and when I get back to the sky, as we will, as I say, you know, we'll, we'll sort of, when, when all this color is on like this in this very almost naive fashion, um, it, it's, it's worth um, stopping and, and just making note of it. Uh, you can, I can do a still at this stage from, from the, um, the video when it's edited and 
and I'll keep this as a still so we can make comparisons as to what it looks like now to what it will look like uh, when we've when we've adjusted to taste to personal taste so i'm thinking that will be blue it's nowhere near as light as it should be if you compare it to the photo that's it's a very pale area of water there but it remember it's supposed to be reflecting the sky isn't it so just cut around my willow again um, so the game of chess moves on. What's my next move? I've used yellow here. I've used blue here. What on earth do I put in here and here and here? So, um, just clean this brush off. I think we could possibly start looking at putting in why don't we do something that's sticking to the rules, but a little variation. This is a bit of ultramarine blue for, for some dark areas on this wall. Okay, something like this. I, I'm always thinking this is a flat surface here that we're looking at. This is the top of a wall, okay? So a bit of dark there. Why don't I put a little um, cerulean blue in with that? I'm not working with a stay wet palette, so I have to spray my uh, paints on the edge of my palette to stop them from skinning over here. So, so a little bit of cerulean blue in between, in between the um, ultramarine blue. So what do I do in here? I know what I'm doing there, but that that will probably be left towards the end when I've when I've realized the um, tonal values of the surrounding area. I don't have to worry about that. I've got the answer for that already. Um, so, so everything is still nice and pushed, okay? Even though I'm doing a little bit of blending here. Let's have a little bit of the darker blue around the edge of the light change on the water. A little bit of blue in here. So I'm purposely trying to avoid pushing the paints together. They're sat alone. It's difficult. Your, your intuition tells you to, um, to sully them, to knock them back as you would normally. Um, you know, it's funny, actually, I get to this point, I think, you know, there's something quite appealing about that. It's very, you know, it's sort of moving towards the semi abstract territory. Okay, why don't we, I, I'm, I have to make a decision. Do, and the, I've only two dis dis sorry, decisions to make here for this and this is one, should it be dark or light? And the second decision is, whatever it is, dark or light, should it be warm or should it be cool? Okay, so what have I got around it? I've got cool all the way around this section. So really design, okay, tells me that should be warm. Those are the sort of, I'm adhering to the uh, rules of design if I, if I make my decision on that basis. So a bit of red. A little bit of yellow won't make it too cool, make it sort of orangey. So a bit of red then makes sense that if this is the same item as that, it will be the same color unless light um, plays a part, which of course to bear that in mind too. So for the moment at least, that might not be my final decision, but for the moment, I think there's a, a reasonable balance here in this painting. Um, I'm just cleaning the brush. So I'm gonna show you what I mean about adding white to um, my paint. Just get the bulk of the paint off this brush. I'll turn to that other brush that I put on the list, which is a one, in, uh, sorry, a half inch flat synthetic. Uh, I'll take some white, good old Windsor Newton Galeria for the moment. 
and get it out of the tube, which isn't so easy. And I'll take the yellow. So this is the first bit of white I've used. Okay, this, this demonstration actually is quite useful for those of us that tend to use too much white in our acrylic paintings. And there's that lovely abstract shape of that field that I spotted and thought, you know, that would be, that's such a great shape. But that's all we are artists, we're just shape makers. And the better you shapes you make, the more interesting shapes you make, the better your artwork. Okay, it's amazing how just that little addition of white and making a good shape, an interesting shape, can lift a painting. There we are. If, I, if, if that flattens out as it dries out, which it probably will to some degree, um, then I can always paint it again as many times as I want until I, I get it to keep till it sits and rests where I want it to, to be. Um, so, yeah, um, remember this too, that uh, acrylic paints, even the best quality ones, darken when they dry out. This looks incredibly intense and bright at the moment, um, but tomorrow these colors will sink into the surface of the board, okay? And, and they'll darken, they, they will look darker than they do today. And that's why as if you're painting in acrylics, sometimes you have to uh, let a painting rest for 24 hours and then paint over it again to get those light values back, okay? And that's when you probably would consider using a little bit more white the following day, just to lift things. Okay, so I'm gonna speed dry this folks. I know that some of these areas are definitely not dry yet, but um, that shouldn't be too much trouble. Uh, and it's worth pointing this out at this point. I just did a speed dry on the paint. Now, if we weren't painting in this pushed color fashion, this push color style, I would have been still working it before drying it. In other words, I'd have been working the wet in wet a lot more. Um, but the wet in wet, it just goes to prove that the wet in wet technique is a very specific technique. Um, you're, you're going in the other direction from pushing colors because it's the enemy, if you like, of, of bright colors. Wet in wet is about mixing colors together uh, in a controlled fashion, of course. Um, whereas, you know, you're only going to keep bright, vibrant, saturated, pushed colors uh, by applying them wet and allowing them to dry and fix at that color that they were applied at, if that makes sense. If you look at my willow tree, can you see how, how I've put these different shapes, how I've built that? That's a design, again, that's a design decision to make it this way. And I see this, I look at that photo and I think, God, look, look at that willow tree. If, it, if I didn't know it was a willow tree, okay, and I changed the color of it and put it in a slightly different environment, it's a waterfall. Think of those cascading elegant branches, very vertical. Think of them as water. Na nature is incredible at repeating itself, um, the shape shapes wise. But again, it, it happens to, harkens rather to um, the design, the, the shape. We are shape makers. And if you can start seeing, if you can start seeing shapes in, in groups, um, there are lots of things in our world as painters, we, we can um, form groups of, and it's, it, it is, it's just a waterfall. It's the same shapes, it's the same design. Anyway, um, yeah, let's move on a little bit and just 
give my paints a little spritz. And by, so how do I knock out, that's my first concern. How do I knock out some of this red uh, the, um, of the building? How do I knock the building back, sorry? Well, why don't I just put a little bit, oops, got a little bit of white with that. I didn't really want that. Let me just put some water there. Um, yeah, so why don't we sort of start saying, well, I'll make this a slightly greener, only slightly, a slightly greener sort of area. And the second you do that, it becomes a less pushed color. I hope you can see what I mean now when, I, when I'm talking about you know, the, 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 how we, how, what we're talking about when it comes to pushed colors. Everything else is still pushed, but just by offering a little bit of its opposite number, i.e. a bit of green, it was a red building. That was its local color for the moment. It was a red building. By introducing a little bit of cerulean blue and a little bit of yellow, makes a green, of course, you start moving away from pushed colors. So if I do that, in most other places, but keep the willow tree, the saturated pushed color area, um, you know, that's my decision. And that, that, that's exactly what I'm talking about um, uh, uh, in terms of the lesson for learning how to use pushed color. So the blue would then require, um, what's the opposite of blue, orange, so take a bit of yellow again, add this time some cadmium uh, red to it. And a little bit of white won't do much harm, but if I had a tiny bit of blue, I have a far more, far less saturated color now. It's not much, it's a really weak diffuse, uh, it's a really weak mix this, that, but it just diffuses the blue a little bit because it's the opposite color. It's it's. I always think the word complementary is an odd term for something that's opposite, but it, but it's referred to, orange is referred to the complementary of blue, just as blue is the complementary to orange. But it's, um, I think what it is, what we, what we talk about with that is that complementaries like a blue and an orange, they do complement each other if they sit side by side, okay? Orange here, blue there. They vibrate, they visually vibrate. So they sort of, it's referred to that they complement each other. But the interesting thing is, if you mix them, they're, they're their worst enemies because they, they knock each other out. So they're hardly complementary once they start mixing. Keep them separate and they play off each other beautifully, but um, mix them and you get into the grayed down, more natural sort of color area. So again, I'm just working on this right-hand side of my building. And what is my cutoff point personally in terms of uh, pushed color? I think I'm in, the, in it about here somewhere. So, I mean, I, I do want to paint something different. I don't want it looking like everything else I've painted. What's the point um, of the exercise if you do that? So I've got to be a little bit disciplined in myself here to say, well, you know, um, I don't want to knock the, the life out of this, out of this pushed color painting. Wouldn't be any point in making the pushed color painting if I did. So... But I'm using again uh, a blue and a red over here, which makes in this case a fairly dulled down purple color. Doesn't look like purple. It's not going to look like purple um, in this painting, but it will just knock back these more pushed yellows because purple is the complementary of yellow. It's a really useful exercise in, in getting to understand um, color. So a little bit more, and I really mean, if I show you what I'm doing here, it's the tiniest bit of ultramarine blue, tiniest bit of cadmium red, okay? And it's just directional brush strokes. Let's make these big shapes. And I, I, I don't think of these as, 
having leaves or anything like that on them. They're just the basic shape. It's very intoxicating. As soon as I start knocking back some of this color, it becomes very, uh, I, I sort of got to stop sometimes and, and, and say, hang on, hang on, you know, remember this, what this was all meant to be about. So perhaps what I should do for the benefit of all of us here, folks, before I do much more, is we take a break here for a coffee or a tea or whatever. Um, we have a little chat. You can question me and um, uh, and and we can then start uh, pick it up after our cuppa. We're going to do that. Let's start thinking about taking this to a place where you know I would be comfortable with it. You might. Get, I'm hoping it'll give you ideas and further insight into what happens when we. Uh, when, when, when we're dealing with color and saturated color. Right, where's that brush gone? The first place I'm gonna start is a safe place. Um, by that, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the sky up here and I've just picked up a little bit, I mean, a little bit of white. And in the lower part, perhaps or through some of this sky, I should say, I'm just gonna infer a bit of a uh, sort of summer cloud, if you like, okay? And have a look at the brush technique I'm using. I just loaded up, um, not too much water, bit of cerulean blue, little bit of white. And I just, if you just let, let the brush sit on the surface like that for a moment, okay? And lightly, almost like you're pushing a, a broom around the floor, okay? You, you're able to create very soft, shapes uh, of clouds in there. Now, I want to sort of keep the exchange between my main character, the willow tree and the sky a bit darker. So if anything, if you're gonna do anything at all on that, I'd probably go back with a bit more of the original color. There's bound to be a little bit of white in this brush because I didn't clean it, but that that is there. Uh, sorry, I've just been picking up a bit more of the um, the ultramarine blue and the cerulean blue. So I will lose some of that uh, burnt, uh, burnt sienna that was in the initial wash on the canvas. It's not essential it stays, but um, but it can be useful if it just does grin through in the odd place. So let's put a little bit more of that shadowy type effect in. And let's say that the, if you know, we were talking about earlier about the, the sense of diagonal through this painting, it's about there, isn't it? It's like that, there's quite a strong sense of diagonal. Well, why not further that by having a diagonal cloud come through here, something like that keeping that movement going. <coughs> and then a little bit darker over here. Again, ultramarine blue. So just reshaping really this edge to this tree over here. I think I'm going to leave the sky there. Now, we would assume then that the water, notice I'm using a vertical brush stroke for the water, as it's a reflected surface. And there's no harm at all in taking that reflected blue over the other areas, the orange areas of the water. So, and that also does the job of knocking the orange back, of course. So would we have a reflection of the willow about here? 
interestingly enough, there's not m that much evidence of it in the photo. That doesn't mean to say we have to uh, adhere to, the, to that, um, you know, or, or go the same way as the photo. So why don't we just have a little reflection about here? So I just picked up a little bit of the yellow that I used for the for the willow tree. But I haven't got so I'm I'm not using the tones of the of the photo, if you think about it. The tones in the water of the photo are very, very dark around here. Perhaps I should consider that. Let's make sure I'm happy with this looking like water. But try not to overdo it. Yeah, I, I, I think in some respects, um, I wonder whether that should be a darker area because we've got a very dark wall here, which we can keep, we can put a little bit of sky reflected light up here. This is such a dry, um, mean bit of paint that I'm applying. Just a wisp of uh, this pale blue that I was using for the clouds. Just on top of that that wall there. That's where we lose the top of the wall over here. And again, all the time I'm thinking that this is playing down the uh, colour. Even though I'm putting blue on blue, this is a much paler blue on top of a dark blue. Go that way, it's not water, go sideways over there mostly. So I'm thinking, why don't we go dark here? I think that would be good because if I go dark on this patch of water, it means I don't have to go dark here as well, but I, but it, what it might help is the, uh, the through movement. This is a dark area here, if I, and that's basically ultramarine blue. Um, if I t if I allow that to come down into this area of water, that can become darker, and I can move through this painting and connect with the wall on the right hand side. I think that's a good, that's a reliable thing thing to do. Um, so down here from this shape into the water, I'll still use vertical brush strokes though for the water. Oh yeah, that's that's really quite nice. And then picking up again where this comes across. Uh, noticed, I don't know whether you noticed this, folks, but the bottom branch limb of this willow tree comes down in front of the line of the bank, the, the, the river bank. So it hangs lower, actually touching the water, I think. So we mustn't cut through that. It stops here and stops there. And that allows this lovely yellow abstract shape to sit in front of this dark line. And then Again, slightly darken up this blue. So I'm, so I am using, although I'm using co uh, color, I'm actually thinking tone. Okay, I'm thinking tonal value. I've lost my ultramarine blue. There it is. And I know another. It's funny how um, if you do it, but by this fashion, if you study and make a decision, it's funny how your last decision helps you find the next decision by doing this by spotting that as a reliable thing to do because i was thinking of connectivity here from the left side to the right sorry from the left side to the right side of the painting okay so i knew that that dark blue was going to work through there like this um but it's what it means now is th this looks like it needs a different tone to it this area here so but i'm sticking with the blue and I'll make that more of a textural scrub around, if you like, rather than, and, and this side, uh, a, a sort of scrubbing effect, because it's not water. Just a little bit more. Do I like that? No, I've got the right tone. I'm not, I'm not, I've, I've got the right tone. So I've definitely done part of what it was that was occurring to my process, thought process. What I'm thinking is now, is, is the colour right for this? Maybe it's, it should be more green. 
and let's see if this will look better green because let's face it there's not much green actually in this painting as yet and that green is a little slightly closer tone to the dark blue which makes it a nice softer more of a softer transition so I keep saying um, I'm thinking both colour and tonal value. Every colour has its tonal value. If I don't like it, if I still think, no, no, you know, that's still not working for me, I can go back to, go back in other directions, I go back in, let's say, um, a bluer direction. The whole area there could be a bit bluer. And maybe that's what it is. Maybe I've got too much of a separation from the top part of my painting to my bottom part of the painting. Okay, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Now, if I take a little bit of the cerulean blue, which is what, which is what makes up most of the sky, um, and this area that I'm not sure about, that I've just thought might be good green, I don't, I don't think it, the green was a great choice. So what I'm gonna suggest is that there's some reflected sky light from this, from the sky, sorry, on this, it becomes now like a sort of turquoise on the top there. Yeah, it gives it a bit more spice. Same for this, as, as after all, this area is the same creature as that area. It's in the same sort of linear position in the painting. So, Perhaps it's the, in the willow tree itself, which I'm leaving till last. Um, perhaps it's in the willow tree itself that requires more green. So I'm seeing wherever I can get away with uh, this sky, pale sky blue color again here. I haven't done much with this, have I? It's a bit um, flat and abstract. Uh, it's been a bit neglected, this. And even that that was one that was so light, so much lighter a moment ago has darkened off in this short period of, uh, of time. So just put a little bit more of the bit more white. And this is this is again what I mean by being careful with white. It's it's better to do it the way I've done it here than 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 say, oh, that's really pale. That was really pale. And perhaps 20 minutes to, ago to decide that I was going to just chuck a load of white in there. It's not the way to do it. Put, lighten it up with a little bit of white, see where it settles after about 20 minutes. And if you still think it needs a bit more white, um, then add, as I'm doing now, a bit more of that white. Because, as I say, you can, you, you go, it gets to a teetering point, white. If you just go too white too quickly, you can't get it out. It's like, God, it looks pasty and horrid. Um, so you, you use, you apply your white sparingly and gradually with, with uh, acrylic paints. Okay, right. Um, still, you know, this is a bit, bit of a, this, I still think this is a bit of a funny area for me. I'm wondering whether it should be really quite flat, slightly darker now. So let's take a little bit of the, uh, uh, what's it called? Ultramarine blue and place it where it already exists, the dark blue, and, but push it up as though what we're saying now is that the only area of this ground is that, that's, that's going to stay that lovely colour I created is the very top. And that now becomes uh, a, a, yeah, a clearer, more simplified shape. It's funny how um, sometimes all it requires is simplicity. It needs simplifying. Let's put a, put a little bit of red out because that will make this blue that I'm applying a little bit dark and a little more purpley, more, more purple-like. Um, so there it is. Ultramarine blue, a little bit of cad red. There it goes, really dark again. As I say, it shows off the the um, it shows off the fall, the, the cascade of this nearer willow tree, the part of the willow tree. And uh, and I realise what I'm doing. I'm I'm nailing the focal point by going dark either side of it. Good. 
slightly darker over here in this corner. So we don't have to have a solid dark line per se. It's sort of slightly darker over here in the corners. There, there, there. Maybe a little bit in that corner of the bridge, edge of the bridge. Um, does that mean that we need to think about a linear, something more linear here? Something like that. I'm going to soften this edge down here where my finger is because it's too hard. So let's just get rid of the paint in the water tub. Dry, dry the brush off slightly here with a cloth and just soften that transition. Because it's not focal point territory, it shouldn't have a hard edge. It should be a soft edge. And the whole thing can be softened. A very, um, it's a very leisurely process, if you like, because it, we're, we're at a stage where we're starting to think well, it's, it's all about, it's more thought than painting now. The early stages are easy, you can just block things in, it's more painting than it is thinking. Now it's more thinking than it is than painting. So once again, I think my um, house is now popped back again somehow, it just seems to be Sort of saying, I'm still here, so uh, just going to knock it back a little bit further. And now, I think, I think we're nearing. Let me just see where are we. Where are we with this color at the red here? We're nearing the finishing touches. I've got to start thinking about the finish. Uh, yeah. So, sorry, I'm thinking aloud. Uh, yeah, I was thinking. We let's give. Let's start thinking that and about giving the f a, a little bit more form to the actual star of the show. So there are areas that are slightly darker. If I do that, it will show off other areas of this willow tree better. So there's the cascade, and, and notice how I'm using the same vertical brush stroke as I was with the water. As I mentioned earlier, it's like water, it's like falling water. This tree is like falling water. Now I can start thinking about a little bit of that white, like we did in the field over here. Some of this uh, willow tree can receive a little bit of white. So quickly cleaning the brush off. I have to be really careful with this. This is this is a this is where things can get a little bit tricky. So I'm just saying at the very top of this cascade, see the shape here. Okay, I, I see the top of that shape is catching a fair bit of light. So I'll just deliver this little bit of uh, slightly whitened, slightly whitened yellow paint to it. And if the sun is coming from what looks like almost almost from behind actually so we can just say that the tops of this willow just getting the lion's share of, of that of those highlights a little bit on top of our lower one down here okay i'm going to put this brush down for a moment and start looking at my little six round brush to see if I can delineate a little more. But therein lies a bit of, uh, well, I'll explain when I, when I do it now. Um, you can, if you're not careful, uh, the smaller brush will start putting in unwanted detail, detail or unnecessary detail, I should say. Um, all I'm doing here is changing what I'm doing right now as I speak. I'm just looking to change the tonal value in areas to lift places. This will be darker tomorrow. So it might look really light in areas, um, but this will, as what acrylics always do, this will look a lot light, uh, sorry, a lot darker tomorrow. 
just it just deflattens. Uh, I say I'm using light. I'm, I'm making sure that things aren't sitting flat. So I'm just hinting upon other colors on top of other colors. And this is exactly also what I mean by um, it's, it's personal taste thing. We, uh, we all, some of us like no sugar in our tea. Some of us like three sugars in our tea. Some of us like three grains of sugar in our tea. That's how finite this type of, this area of our painting can get. It's one person's uh, loose style is another person's tight or another person's abstract. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I, I do like that decision there on that field because it has done exactly what I was hoping it was going to do. And that was just pop this. It's it's almost like it says, you know, hey, come 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 this way. There's some there's some beautiful, especially if I just enhance a little bit the, of the willow a bit more with that pale yellow, then it's these these areas are talking to each other. So does that mean is a real here's an, a real curveball? Um, does that mean that if I were to put a glimmer of light here? particularly if it went horizontally, would that, would that too help? Would that help also, sorry, terrible grammar, um, the message that this is going, you know, I want you to come in from the right-hand side as well as the left-hand side into my focal point territory. Um, right. It looks quite different on the monitor. I have this sort of monitor screen on the back of my camera and it looks different in my monitor screen to what it looks in real life in front of me. It looks different again on my laptop monitor. Um, they're not miles apart, to be honest, but I, uh, the one on my monitor, I've got to be careful. If, if I look at the one on my monitor and do something in reaction to the, what it looks like on my, on my camera monitor, I'll regret it because actually um, it looks fine on the other in real life and, and the other um, areas. Sorry, uh, the, the other screens. So, so I think what I'm going to do is a tiny bit more of this knocking back down the side here. So we're not seeing too much color on this side of the building. Okay. Almost, almost like a vignette, isn't it? What I'm doing is I'm creating a vignette. It's soft around here um, with the brightness reserved for this area here. I think this could come down a little bit. Now I'm gonna put that brush down and I'm picking up a little. This is, um, I haven't used the rigger brush and I might do, it was on the list. Um, might use the rigger brush, but as I say, uh, the trouble is with small brushwork on paintings like this, you can start seeing, uh, you can start applying the wrong thing. Um, a little bit of uh, line that might come off this roof down this end of the painting. A, a little bit now uh, around the, my main concern is this is this willow tree so i just pop in little pockets here and there of um darks to, to outline some of these the, 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 this shape here sorry of in the tree within the tree it's a very difficult sorry folks this is a very difficult thing to sort of explain this is very arbitrary and there's if i'm honest and i think probably thinking it anyway it's not an easy thing to to, this isn't an easy thing to teach another person this what i'm doing I, all i'm doing in my head is saying well look in a practical sense light likes dark and dark likes light place them close together and it'll start singing you know it, it's i'm just playing light off dark putting these little darks in places where i think this well i could argue that's a little shadowy recess between those two clumps of shapes but what it's really doing is popping this out and a couple of little upward uh, uh, brush strokes like this will give you further thinking water, falling water all the time, strangely enough. So 
the bottom of the of the water as it uh, falls off the whatever's above it. Now a little bit of delineation elsewhere. Um, not too much elsewhere because as I say, uh, if I get too clever and too finickety, too fiddly uh, in too many places, my focal point's gonna disappear. So, but I can, if it, if it enhances just a bit of pure color here and there, is it a dark warm or a dark cold? Somewhere in between. So I notice I've only darkened this end window of the building. I haven't darkened these two nearer windows here. I've only darkened the window that's nearest the focal point. Uh, and perhaps something about here. These are incidentals. These are just incidental marks. No idea what they could be. They could be the top of a post. It doesn't really, well, it doesn't matter at all. What, it, what, what matters is that they're placed in the right place and they're, that they're showing this area off. A little bit down here because, you know, suggestion of, of what's real. This is water, isn't it? So just a couple of striations down here to suggest water. Got to be quite steady of hand here. That's why stood up, being stood up helps enormously to get a proper horizontal brush like that. Your whole arm has to move. Okay. Um, I'm just going to try one more thing, I think, to this, to nail this painting. And that's to go with something that is almost, almost white. Just dotting the odd shape still. Uh, a little bit at the edge of the bridge, just there. Be very careful, as I say, all the time to make sure that you're not pulling people away from the focal point here. So that looks quite bright on my camera, but it's not that bright in, in real life. So I can review this as you can, folks. You can review your paintings tomorrow. Tomorrow, it will look different, trust me. So um, tomorrow, when you take the painting out to look at it, uh, ask yourself this simple question. Um, is, it, is it too dark somewhere? Um, it's unlikely you've gone too light, unless, as I say, you've been plow piling in the white paint through the entire process. Then you've got issues. Um, it's very difficult, actually, to um, get a, a very opaque looking painting back to any depth of colour. You, you can darken them by glazing over a, a, a very opaque looking painting. But to get any real depth of colour, it's quite difficult to do over the top of white, a very uh, a painting that you've used a lot of white on. But um, I'm, that's, so that's where I am now. I'm taking the smallest amount, let me just show you, taking the smallest amount of yellow with a fair bit of white, but this is gonna be, this isn't gonna get much, uh, the painting's not going to receive much of this. So I could sort of say, what if we, what if we were to suggest there was a, a, a duck or something down here, um, just a small lozenge, horizontal, slightly horizontal lozenge shape like that might indicate there are a few uh, uh, domestic birds, domestic ducks down here, white ducks. Um, we could ha add a little bit of this further to uh, tops of our, some places at the tops of our willow tree. Maybe there, something like that. Very arbitrary, that could have been the wrong mark. I'm not saying, you know, this is, I, I can't, nobody could teach you where to place these. You just gotta use logic and say, it's gotta be in the upper tree areas, isn't it? And it's gotta be the, on the upper 
uh, top area of any sh individual shape like this. We know that these shapes are hanging vertically. So you, you, you're not gonna see a lot of light down the face of that shape or underneath it, certainly not, certainly not to the sides. That's those areas there for your darks. But the tops up here, you do something like that and use your finger just to pull it down ever so slightly. Um, you know, you've got, you've got potential areas, perhaps that, see that was too low. I think, really think that was too low. So I'm gonna put that yellow back over that. And that's the type of thing you don't want to do if I'm absolutely honest about it. So yeah, keep it for the tops. Be really mean with this little bit of white. Um, I think, I think we're there. I will, just because I put it on the list, just pick up the rigger brush for a moment. And um, with something akin to what I use for those little inferences of ducks there. Oh, by the way, the ducks, if you've left them for a little while, might still be a little bit wet. So you can pull off a reflection of the duck like that. But you don't, you don't put the duck on and then do an immediate ref reflection because you'll take the duck away with, on the end of your finger. Never thought I'd say that phrase in my life before. <laughs> um, anyway, sorry, where were we? Let's sort of say there's a little bit of reflected light. Oops, needs to be a little more yellow. A little bit of reflected light off this lovely uh, willow tree there, okay. And I wouldn't normally put a mount around uh, an acrylic painting like this. But I think it could come in useful for the purpose of uh, is isolating what our work today. I would always uh, frame this in a, a, a traditional uh, oil painting type frame. So no inner mount, no glass, just directly into the frame. Oh, and I would varnish it. And that's something else perhaps I can, um, this type of sort of advice I can give on in my uh, um, newsletters and things. Let me just get the mount. Yeah, you know, I, I've enjoyed that. I've, I've, I would still look at it tomorrow and say, you know, do we change something in here? Anyway, folks, there it is. I hope you've enjoyed this. I thought I'd show you this. This is the day after when the uh, acrylic paint settled, um, and it does sort of. Um, does darken down um, to a certain degree. Um, and um, I had a look at it um, that following morning and I decided that I preferred just to change a little bit. I added here um, this section of blue, came down the roof here with the same color, which is just a little addition of cerulean blue. And um, and just popped a, a few of these more abstract shapes, and that was about it really. That's all I felt that the um, the painting needed. So I've kept it fairly close because um, I was happy with it at the end of the demonstration, and I just felt as though it just needed a couple of these um, a couple of areas that needed lifting. So if you remember, it was the the issue for me at least was was this this section here. So um, I thought I'd let you see that, um, but it, that is very much a personal taste, you know, if had it been somebody else's uh, painting at the end, they might have chosen to leave it as it was, um, or even changed um, more of it than I've changed here. So um, as a little bonus bit at the end there, um, I'm hoping you'll uh, sort of see the, the reasons for me doing that.